Welcome to my course on the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. I'm standing next to the iconic portrait of the greatest mathematician of the Middle Ages, Fibonacci. Fibonacci was born almost 850 years ago in Pisa, around the same time that they started building what later became the Leaning Tower of Pisa. In the year 1202, Fibonacci finished his influential book, Liber Abaci, the Book of Calculation, that brought the Arabic numerals to Europe, the 0, 1, 2, 3 that we use today. Fibonacci also presented a problem about a growing rabbit population and derived the now famous sequence of numbers that is named after him, the Fibonacci sequence. In this video, I want to explain to you about the rabbit problem and also uh, derive Fibonacci's numbers. So what is the rabbit problem? We start with one newborn rabbit pair, say placed in an enclosed field. Uh, these newborn rabbits take one month to mature to adults. The pair is a male and a female. Uh, then they mate and the female becomes pregnant and the female is pregnant for one month and then uh, gives birth to a newborn rabbit pair. And then the rabbit pair mates again and so on, continuing to give birth every uh, month. Uh, also, uh, we make a simplification in this problem. Either it's a very short time interval or we just assume that no rabbits will die. So the problem posed by Fibonacci was how many rabbit pairs would, be, would there be after one full calendar year? So what we need to do then is we need to count rabbit pairs. So we can do that by constructing a table. So here's our table. The first row we put the month, January, February, March, April. Let's say we start on January 1st. And uh, the answer to our problem will be after one calendar year, say on January 1st of the next year, how many rabbit pairs will there be? We can count rabbit pairs by counting the newborn rabbits at the beginning of every month. I call them juveniles. And then we can count the number of, of adults at the beginning of every month and then sum the juveniles and adults to get the total number of rabbit pairs. So in the first month, let's say January 1st, we introduce one newborn rabbit pair into the population. So we have one juvenile, no adults, and one rabbit total. After one month to February 1st, the, juveniles, the juvenile pair of rabbits mature into an adult pair of rabbits. So we have no juveniles now. We have one adult and still one uh, one total rabbit pair, one rabbit pair total. Okay, then what happens in the next month? Well, those adult rabbits mated, the male and female mated. The female was pregnant for one month and then gave birth to a newborn pair of rabbits on March 1st, say. So then we have one juvenile uh, on uh, March, one juvenile pair, one adult pair. This adult pair is still the same adult pair we had in February, and uh, two total rabbit pairs. So in April then, this adult pair will again give birth to a juvenile pair of rabbits, and this juvenile pair then will mature into adults. So we have one juvenile pair, two adult pairs, and then three total rabbits. And the population proceeds like this. So the adults always, the adult pairs always give birth, or at least the female of the adult pair of rabbits always gives birth to new, uh, newborn rabbits. And the newborn rabbits uh, at the month always mature into adults. So if we continue, 
we can fill up the table. And the answer to Fibonacci's problem is on January 1st of the next year, we would already have 233 rabbit pairs. So we've gone from, in one calendar year, we've gone from one rabbit pair to 233 rabbit pairs, right? The population is uh, growing very fast. We use the term breeding like rabbits because rabbits uh, can, rabbit population can grow very fast because you can have newborn rabbits every month. Okay, so let's look at uh, these numbers. Let's look at the total number of rabbit pairs. The, this is a sequence down here in the last row. The sequence goes like 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. This is a number sequence. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence has a very um, characteristic pattern. Uh, if we look at starting with this number 2, we see that this number 2 is 1 plus 1. It's the sum of the preceding two numbers. And if we continue, the number 3 is 1 plus 2. The number 5 is 2 plus 3. The number 8 is 3 plus 5. 13 is 5 plus 8. So every number then uh, is the sum of the preceding two numbers. We can write that as an equation. So if we call capital F sub n the nth Fibonacci number, then the equation is that the F sub n, the nth Fibonacci number, is equal to F sub n minus 1, the n minus 1 Fibonacci number, plus F sub n minus 2, the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. This is called a recursion relation and is uh, the basis of the Fibonacci sequence. But it's not enough to generate all of the Fibonacci numbers because you have to start somewhere with this equation. You have to have some starting values, some initial values of the Fibonacci numbers. It's traditional to choose f sub 1 and f sub 2 as the starting values of the Fibonacci number. So we say f sub 1 equals 1. That means we're starting with a newborn rabbit pair. And we say f sub 2 equals 1, which means that it takes one month for the newborn rabbit pair to mature to adults. So in this video, we derive the Fibonacci sequence. The rest of the course will look at some interesting properties of this sequence and also um, its relationship to a famous number which is called the golden ratio. I'll see you next time.